In this video, we are going to implement a packet exception class, and we are going to modify our packet class to throw packet exceptions if unexpected behavior occurs. Before we begin the packet exception class, one thing I want to add in is in our socket function where we are receiving a packet, I meant to have a check here to verify that the buffer size is not bigger than the max packet size, so let's add that in. And we're just saying, if the packet size is bigger than our max packet size, we'll return an error and not even try to process that packet because clearly something went wrong there. Let's go ahead and make a new header file. We will just call this packet exception. And what we are going to do is we're going to just create a basic class called packet exception. It's going to take in a string for whatever the exception is. We're going to store it inside of a private member called exception. And then we'll have a what function to get the string as a C string, or we can have the to string function to get back an actual string. Some of you may be wondering why I'm not inheriting from the exception class up here. And that's just because before when I had ported this to Linux, I ran into issues with that. So I'm just not going to use it for this. However you decide to do it is up to you, but I just remember I ran into issues last time I did that, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Now let's look into some situations where we would throw a packet exception. Let's go into the packet CPP. The first thing we're going to look at is our append function, because any time that we append anything to our packet buffer, we call this function. So what we want to make sure is we want to make sure that the total packet size is not greater than max packet size. Well, we have to include the constants header. And if it is greater than max packet size, we're going to throw a packet exception here. Before we can throw a packet exception, we have to include the packet exception header. So let's go up to packet header and just include it here. Now let's go back to the CPP. And when we throw a packet exception, I'm going to format it something like this. So the idea is inside of brackets, we will have the function that the exception occurred on. And then after that, we'll have a description of what the exception was. So in this case, if our packet size ends up being bigger than max packet size, which would be an issue, then we're going to throw a packet exception. Let's take a look at some other things that might be an issue. As far as insertion operators, they all call append. So I'm not too concerned with them right now. But what about extraction operators? If the programmer tries to extract more things than are actually in a packet, then that is undefined behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if the remaining bytes could even possibly contain this data. What we'll do here is we'll say if the current extraction offset plus the size of this data is greater than our buffer size, so that means that our buffer could not possibly contain this data, then we'll throw an exception here. And for this exception, we are just going to say uh, extraction offset exceeded the buffer size. Now if we go down to our other extraction operator for the string, we'll have to do the same thing here. Right here we are calling the extraction operator for the 32-bit unsigned integer, so we don't have to worry about that, but we do for the string. So at this point in the code, we will have the size of the string stored in string size. So what we could do is we could say, if the current extraction offset plus the string size is greater than buffer size, and that means that there's no way that our buffer could possibly store this string, then we will throw an exception. We will say the extraction offset exceeded the buffer size. Let's take a look at how something like this would work. So if we go into our server CPP, and let's say that we add another string to be extracted from our packet, we can do something like this, where we try to extract three strings from the packet that only contains two strings. Now let's run the server and the client, and you'll see what happened was the exception got thrown when we were extracting the size of the string because we have already reached the buffer after we extracted two strings and the first part of extracting a string is getting the string size. So the buffer got thrown here, 
And then, you know, we see we got an unhandled exception. Now, if we wanted to catch that exception, all we would have to do is just put a try catch in for when we are extracting from the packet. And then we could print out the exception. And then since an exception occurred for this connection, we could break out. And now when we test this, we'll see what happens is the client attempts to send a chunk of data and then we reach the end of the code since the connection was lost. And then on the server, we get new connection accepted and then we get the exception that happened when we were trying to extract an integer. That is all that we are going to cover in this video. In the next video, we are going to review implementing a packet type for our packets. Currently, we have no way of differentiating between two different packet types, and surely we will have different packet types that have different data structure layouts. So in the next video, we're going to implement that, and we're going to test sending and receiving packets of different packet layouts.